we're not really gonna have pictures taken while we get dressed. No one needs to see that. It's fine, I promise you. Hello, and welcome to episode 111 of the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. This is a crafty, puppy-interrupted podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I am your human host, Gabby, and you can find me everywhere online as Gabby Gills and on my hand-dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi. Thank you so much for checking us and our little corner of the internet out. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, hello and welcome. We have a couple things to get into before we get into the crafting, and that is the pumpkin make long ended. And Joanna, my fellow pum queen of Stitching the High Notes, and I have recorded the prize drawing video, so that should be out soon. I did realize uh, moments before recording this that I forgot one of the prizes. So. I may just do a small drawing of the, I'm going to do the chatter thread for the, <laughs> Hazelnut's giant wheel, what's this called? Big wheel. Um, and just message the winner with that. Again, I did not realize that until moments ago. <laughs> so that video will be out soon on both of our channels. And here's to another year of the pumpkin make along and I'm very excited for next year's already. Already. As for events, Vlogmas is coming. I am very excited to do that again. And December 21st and 22nd, I will be having a trunk show at Nitty City in New York City. If you are in the city for that weekend, please stop in and say hello. All right, with that, let us get into the crafting. Because I was on vacation last week, I do have a small pile of things to show you. And to start off, we will go with what I am wearing. I'm wearing the Love Note Pullover by Tin Can Knits. I did this out of my hand-eyed yarn on my Penny and Fig Lace Base, which is my um, MCN and Fig, nope, Fig Lace Mohair, <laughs> Mohair and Silk in the previous yarn engagement colorway, which was our Rhinebeck color from this year. And I love it. I did the cropped Hilo hem version, three quarter sleeves. It is super comfy and I love mohair sweaters. Yep. I'm wearing this over my York pinafore by Helen's Closet and I am a huge fan of wearing sweaters over this pinafore. So with that, let's get into finished objects. I have a couple. Starting with knitting. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, I showed you my first wedding tie. This was neatly folded at one point. This is the wedding tie pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Yes. Uh, I am doing this on a spore weight on US 5 DPN Knitter Pride, Knitter's Pride Nova Platina Needles. I am adjusting the pattern slightly by adding a couple stitches to the widest part of the tie because this is a skinny tie recipe and we're not doing skinny ties. So last time I showed you tie number one. I have finished tie number two, which is Shenandoah fibers in the berry patch colorway. I just had to weave in some ends. And last night, I have finished tie number three. And this is Quince & Co on their chickadee base in the, in the skyline colorway. So we have finished best man, groomsman number one, three, and four. And I have two friends who are so kindly and so generously knitting two more ties for me. And I don't know what I would do without them. So thank you. Three ties out of the eight are done. And I have not cast on, but caked up tie number four. So this tie will be for my dad. And this is, take it out of the yarn it. Um, what's it called? Brooklyn Tweed on their loft base, and I don't know where the tag is, but it is the light gray version. Nope, light gray colorway. I'll look up the colorway. I've never knit with loft before, so I'm very excited to dig into this. And this will be the last tie I have to knit. Thank God. <laughs> so I'm going to cast that on tonight. These are going by a lot faster than I thought they would. Here are my needles. Uh, which is very hopeful because we have 112 days and I thought I was going to be drowning in ties, but I think we might be able to finish these all by the end of the year, which is 
perfect because that means when the guys start going for their suits I can give one of them their ties so we can see it in person before the day of the wedding <laughs> which would be really nice because it turns out I'm a planner and I did not know that so that is finished objects one and two for knitting we do have some spinning finished objects and I'm super excited because I have finished the first skein of my Illyrian wings for the wedding cardigan. This is Illyrian wings by Classy Squid Fiber Co. I cannot even. This is a blend of Corydale, Silk, Angelina, and a ton of stuff. I don't have the labels in front of me. They are still in the bin. This is, I'm gonna say about five ounces of a three ply. No, that's a lot. This is maybe six ounces of a traditional three ply. It's between a fingering and a sport weight. I have about 433 yards. I haven't weighed it. It's just this, this was six ounces of fiber when I started spinning. There is about an ounce left on some of the bobbin. So it wasn't a completely even ply, which I'm totally fine with. I'm just going to continue spinning and hopefully get about 600 yards. My aim is for a top-down cardigan that's cropped with long sleeves. It is winter, it will be March when I wear it, so I would like that. I don't have any patterns totally picked yet. I'll probably be putting them up on the screen while I'm talking because I don't know the names off the top of my head, but I do have a couple I am going to consider for the pattern. I don't think I'll pick it until I've finished spinning everything. That way I know if I can definitely knit one or if I need to get another bat. I spun the singles on my Eel Nano wheel and I plied everything on my Honey and Ply, my Blue Bonnet Honey and Ply, which was uh, a little jolt to the system because I wasn't used to treadling after so long of using the electric eel, which just made me miss my wheel even more. I am so excited for this. It is super soft. It is super squishy. I have washed and uh, thwacked this and it's very even. It, it was pretty twisty before I washed it, but after some light thwacking, it's so even. And I don't know if you can get all these colors, but it is this dark chocolate brown base with just little hints of blue and red and creams and oranges and yellows and ugh, the depth of color in these bats is astounding. I am so in love with this. If you have not spun with Classy Squid and you are a spinner, I highly recommend it. I haven't really uh, had the chance to start spinning, it, spinning again because I've just been admiring this one skein. I love it so much. I'm so excited. I'm hoping I can get like a lace or a textured yoke for the cardigan. I think if I do something with lace and then the, you can kind of see the dress through it a little bit, that'll be really nice. But I just want to show off this yarn. It's stunning and I just want to squish it forever and ever and ever. I love it so much. I'm so excited to cast this on. My aim is to have everything done being spun by the end of December. I may just do a swatch in like the average needle size of all the cardigans I have picked and see what my gauge is on, it's probably gonna be like a five or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna swatch, maybe. I'm not gonna, I'm so serious. <laughs> yeah, my goal is to have everything spun up by the end of December, that way I can cast on in January, which I think is doable, and that will give me plenty of time to knit myself a cardigan, because there's not a lot of bust to cover, and it's a cropped cardigan. It's really the sleeves that are gonna take the longest. I love it so much. Ugh, I just can't get over this little BB. He's just been traveling around the house with me. So I'm gonna put him in here with my nightshades so they can be friends. Oh, they look so good together. Do you see that? So good. That is my spinning finished object. I'm hoping I can, maybe I'll start spinning again tonight. I get very ambitious on Fridays when I record this. And I do have a sewing finished object. I did finish start and finish sewing myself a dressing robe. Dressing gown? Ta-da! 
I know it looks very good held up like this. So this is a uh, dressing robe recipe basically. I got off Pinterest. I will link to it in the show notes below. It's um, basically rectangle measurements based on your bust, which I found out is not a good thing to go off of if you are pear shaped like most humans are because your bust is definitely smaller than your hips. And if the rectangles are only big enough to cover your bust, it's not gonna close on the bottom. So I did the measurements on my bust, which is 30, and ended up having to do gores on the bottom because my hips are, I think, 37. 36 or 37. Um, so I would recommend going by your hip measurement, not your bust measurement. I do love the way this fits with the, I don't know if you can see that, the gores in there because it does give it very much an A-line shape now. So it does fit quite snug on top, not quite snug. It fits really nicely on top. It closes, There's, it doesn't like gape open in weird spots and it's got a lot more wiggle room on the bottom. So I do like how that turned out. Um, it's got three quarter sleeves. I was hoping for long sleeves, but I'm not that mad because there's also just big sleeves. So I don't need wizard sleeves. This is out of a green linen blend. I'm gonna guess it's a linen cotton or a linen polyester blend. I'm not totally sure where this fabric came from. Maybe Affordable Fabrics, maybe Joann's. I might have gotten it in a swap. I don't really remember, but it was in my stash. And I did a blind hem for the sleeves and the bottom. And then um, a tie. Super easy. And I did French seam, this was a foolish, foolish idea. I did French seams for all of the seams, which has made the armpits a little bit bulky and a little bit awkward. And then I had to pick out the French seam so I could do my gores, as you can see here. So my plan is to just run these through the serger. I think I pinked some of them, but not well enough. So I'm just gonna run these through the serger. I think if I just ran the whole thing through the serger, I would have been fine, but I want it to be fancy. I love this thing. I've worn it so much since I finished it. It's just super nice to ha like throw over. I usually end up sleeping in like workout tank tops and like leggings and stuff. So it's just really nice to have something to throw over in the morning and to have on after showers. Just, I don't know what I was doing before this. I was living like a peasant. That's what I was doing. So this is all done. I really enjoy it. I might just have this be my like, I know most people get like the floral robes for getting ready the day of the wedding. But if I don't end up buying a Harry Potter cloak, which I kind of want to do, I think I'm just going to wear this because it's nice. We're not really going to have pictures taken while we get dressed. No one needs to see that. It's fine. I promise you. So here we go. It was a lot of fun. It took most of the afternoon, but well worth it. I didn't end up actually doing the robe blue dress because I didn't have enough fabric once again, because why follow directions? And I don't think I have enough fabric to do the fan tail skirt with that fabric either. So that's sort of lost my sewing mojo a little bit. So those are my finished objects, one from each category. And with that, let us get into the whips. All right, we're gonna go by age for whips, I think. I think that's the best. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, so I am still working on my shift cowl, but I haven't really put a lot of work into it. So I'm not gonna show you. It's been like two rows. Doesn't look any different. My goal is to finish that for next week so I can wear it Christmas tree shopping. So we're gonna start off now with my oldest whip, which is, do you remember these guys? Do you remember them? The Layton House Hand Warmers. This is a pattern by Ella Austin and it is Moldview uh, yarns, which is a Welsh, nope, it's a Wensleydale yarn, and everything is naturally hand dyed in Wales. The mother country, pups. The mother country. They don't care. I got this last year at the Loop London pop up at Emiac, and last Friday was their pop up again. I did not go because I have not knit anything out of the yarn I bought last year. So I picked up, finally, these guys. 
the problem I was having with them is they were coming out bigger than I thought they were going to. And this, this is the size of the chart and it's all charted. So I was going cross-eyed trying to do that. I finally, I'm not going to show you the chart, but I photographed, I scanned in and blew it up to be eight by 10 size. So this size, which is a lot easier to read, even for my 29 year old eyes, I was going cross-eyed trying to read that small chart. I blew the chart up and I started over from the Latvian braid, which was a pain in the butt because I got the light sage and cream color, which basically looked the same in the dark. So now we're like 10 rows in and it's beautiful. I am knitting this on size zero. Yep, US zero, two millimeter needles. This is coming out bigger than I anticipated, but I think it's going to be okay. I think I knit the cuff on double zeros. I have to check my needle gauge, but I was on double points. It was not working. I kept, the needles just kept falling out of the yarn. So I switched to some high highs and here we are. We're in the thumb increases and it just looks so beautiful. I am aiming to get these done for the wedding. So I have some fingerless mitts if we do outside shots. Wait, my hands don't fall off. And then I will have a deadline for these because if I don't have a deadline, I'm never gonna finish these. Uh, I am working on the left hand mitt and it is becoming a lot easier to do this now that there's a pattern forming and you can kind of read the knitting and see where you messed up. In the first couple rows that I had to keep ripping out, I just couldn't, there was no flow to it. It was just tiny, tiny madness. But now we have some knitting to read. There's a little bit of weight behind everything and I love them. It's such a rustic wooly wool. It's super airy. I think it's just a two ply, but it's just, oh, it's delightful. I enjoy these thoroughly and I'm very excited to see them done. And I've just got a little Katrinkle sock progress keeper over here to mind my row. And I just picked these up again uh, this week, like two days ago. I finally dug them out and made the chart larger. I think on Monday I picked them up and knit this in about a day. So it's not a fast knit by any means, but it's beautiful and it's interesting and it holds your attention. You know, I'll show you my floats. This one does. My floats aren't that bad. Look at that. That's not nice. That's not nice. Oh God. <laughs> That's not awful. <laughs> I'm really enjoying these. I'm now that again, I've got a little bit to the mitt. I'm very excited to finish these and wear them. Knitting up the wool is not that, it feels like it should be pretty itchy. I don't think I could wear this on my neck. No, I probably could. I think we'd be okay. But it's a lot softer knit up than it is just in the cake. I love it so much. These little BBs. And this is living in my Loop London bag that I got last year. My Gryffindor London bag, if you will. The other thing that I put a huge dent in is my Mount Pleasant top by Pippin Pin, my second one, and I'm super excited to wear this. I cast this on last week so I would have something to knit at the Knit New Haven birthday party, and I did, but I didn't read the directions very well, so I had to rip the whole thing out and start over. <laughs> More on that. Oh God, well, you're there, you're fine. So this is where I'm at. I have cast on, I have done the lace chart and I am now working on the body of the sweater. What I ended up doing at Knit New Haven was casting on and then knitting the body of the sweater, but no lace. So ripped that out and started over and we did it right. This is out of my hand dyed yarns in the, on the iron base, which is our BFL tweed in the Rodney colorway, which is gorgeous wine burgundy. I mean, it's after a Cabernet, so. And I love it. I am so excited to wear this. I'm just going to use my other Mount Pleasant as a measuring guideline because I love the way that one fits. The other one I have is in Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Gothic Queen colorway. And I wear that thing to death. It's my favorite knit top. It goes with everything. I just love it so much. This is pretty bunched up on the needles but this is going to be a very quick knit and I'm so excited. I love Pippin Pin patterns. 
if you have not heard me lament about them forever, I don't know what podcast you've been watching, but it might not have been this one, which is fine. That's fine. I have one more sweater of hers planned I want to make out of, I don't know if you can see it, but my lambstring is in my little glass case over here. I have a cardigan by her I want to knit my lambstring out of. I don't think I can cast that on until after the wedding uh, knitting goes, but I'm so excited for it. I am doing the small size, which I think is a 36 inch bust. Again, wait, I do have the pattern in front of me. Yep. I am doing the small size, which is a 34 inch bust, giving me about four inches of positive ease, which is about where I like my ease, but no more than four inches for a, a cropped cardigan. Nope, cropped pullover. I am knitting this on the recommended needle size, which is a size five. Yes, size five. The smaller needle is a four, so I have my four on my left hand needle because that one doesn't matter as much. And then I only have to change one needle when I get to the needle changing parts. Yep, I'm just chugging along. This has been my knitting while I die yarn. And it is knitting while I die project. <laughs> it is living in my matter root phases of the moon bag. I love so dearly. Oh, I should get the row counter. Hold on. I cannot say enough good things about Pip and Pin patterns. They're great for beginners. They're great for intermediate. They're just such wearable designs. I love them so much. Our final work in progress is a new cast on and it's a test knit of sorts. Okay, so this is the Fireheart Cowl by Tiff Nielsen. Nealin. By Tiff Nealin. She is a local Connecticut uh, designer. I did not realize that she was so close. I forget how small her, spa her state is. And she is designing a cowl out of my hand dyed yarn and I'm so excited. So I obviously had to immediately pick out my colors and cast it on as soon as I could get my hands on the pattern. It is just starting testing so I'm not totally sure on the release date. I don't have a release date yet but as soon as I hear from her on that I will be posting it on Instagram so if you don't follow me on Instagram at least follow her because her designs are stunning. So this is an Erin Waite cowl using my Cecil base and it's a she's gonna do a three color cowl and a matching hat to go with it so I am doing a two color version because I can follow the rules and this is where I am right now this is my Fireheart colorway from my Throne of Glass series. And I, oh, I love how this is knitting up. It is my everything. And I am pairing this with Buzzard from my Throne of Glass. <laughs> uh, I love it so much. I had to put them together. Like you have to put them together. They're just, you have to put them together. It's Fireheart and Buzzard. If you don't read the books, do. Um, this is, this is the ultimate relationship, I would say. It's the most accurate relationship, the kind of, the one that starts with like, oh my god, I hate you, please stop and go die. And then at the end of it, they're like, yeah, actually, you know what, you're not the total worst. So we're in love now. Great, perfect, great. And then you cry for like 10 years. Anyway, so this is my color pairing. I'm going to do, instead of three colors, I'm just going to sandwich these two in. And I haven't decided on the color for the hat yet. I'm thinking Blood Moon or Death, but I don't know if I have, I don't know if I can stomach that. I might just cry every time I see this. Oh god, okay, cool, cool, it's fine, it's cool. Oh, I'm so excited. I cast this on two days ago, oh, and I'm using, I am borrowing a pair of Luka needles from my friend, and I love how these knit up. They're way pointier than my other wooden needles, which I really like. I do like, a, I do love a pointy needle. And it's just, I haven't done a herringbone stitch in so long, and it looks so good, and it's, mindless but really interesting just don't look at my um i think i'm twisting them wrong just don't look at my seam my seam is awful that's no one look at that we're just only going to show you this side oh, it's coming out so good i don't know why i haven't knit her patterns before she did 
a cowl, I want to say a year ago, where she held my yarn double with some wool folk, and that was stunning. And then she came out with a couple sweater patterns recently, also stunning. So yeah, this has just been taking over my whole life. I just want to knit on this. It's knitting up super quick because it's giant needles. It's the second cowl I've knit out of my Erin Waite base. I really want to knit a sweater out of it, but I also want to knit like eight more cowls. I am moving into Cowl City at an alarming rate and I'm okay with it. I think, I think that's fine. There's just so many cowls I want to knit now. Uh, so this is my last whip. Uh, again, I'm using my Fireheart and Buzzard colorway and I will post on Instagram as information comes out about this cowl. So you guys can also do that. I might, I'm gonna do some kits eventually for these of a couple different pairings. That way you can just grab them and go. And this is knitting up so fast. An alarming rate. Almost as alarming as how quickly I'm moving into Cowl City. So this is living in my Eldenwood Craft Winter Animals bag, which I love dearly. So cute. And those are, are all the things I have been knitting. I am waiting for Kristen from Vull and Vine just uh, announced that she designed a pattern using my yarn called the Kalanmai Cowl, and you know I have to cast that on. So I'm now digging through all of the yarn in the world to figure out what color I wanna do. I kinda wanna do it out of one of the advent calendar colors, but I don't know if I could resist not showing you until that color came out. So I might just redo it, not redo it. I might knit it out of, she did it in the hearth colorway, so I might do it out of that, or I might do it out of Hello Witchling. Cause I feel like she would love Cal and Mai. Very dangerous, lots of fire. I don't know, I have to think about it. I'm just getting, oh. My advent calendar is like directly behind the, the camera. I can't not look at it. I had to put it under Jake's desk for a while cause I almost opened it on myself. I know all the colors. It's not a surprise to me, but I'm so excited. So I might do that. I also really want to knit her stroker. Stoker? Stoker? I want to knit the stoker shawl that she designed out of an advent color, but I don't think I have the self-control not to scream it from the rooftops. I might do- <gasps> Oh no. Okay, cool. No, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's gonna be awful. I can't wait until this yarn swallows me whole. All right, so that is what I have been working on. <laughs> Excuse me while my brain explodes with knitting plans that I have no time to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So that is it for my crafting. Um, I do have some crafting goals upcoming week. I want to finish my shift cowl so I can wear that next week. I do want to finish this cowl. Oh wow, that's one, two, three, four. It's four cowls. So I have this cowl, I have the shift cowl, the Cal and my cowl, and my friend Sam of Samantha Garen Designs has also designed a cowl using the Hudson and West yarn, and it's this beautiful cable-y thing. And she has some leftover yarn she said I could use for it, but I also have... So here it is. It is this beautiful sunflower mustardy yellow. It is finished wool. I got in a swap a couple years ago. I don't want to rip open the tag, but I'm gonna. Me? I don't know what 20%... It's 80% wool, so I'm not sure what the other 20% is. Probably a nylon or polyamide of some sort. Um, I have 180 grams of it, so I think that should be enough to do a small version of Sam's new cowl, and I think this would be perfect for just like a super cable-y cowl. So I kind of also want to knit out of this. She has this beautiful like bluish gray. There are too many choices. I just want to knit so many things. I just want to cast on so many things. I also really want to cast on my city limits, but that's going to be post-wedding bliss. I'm going to cast it on the breakfast after the wedding. And I can't wait. Yes, so that is my crafting. I have no new things that have come into the home since my little baby books. So where were we? 
um, crafty goals. I want to finish both cowls and get started on that spinning. That's really my goal. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be podcasting next week because we are going Christmas tree shopping on the Friday and Thanksgiving in America is on that Thursday, which feels way faster than it should be, but it's also like the end of the month. So my brain doesn't know what's happening in the world anymore. That's it. I might vlog a little bit for that. Probably not. Who knows? We'll see. I might put something a little, a little thing together on Saturday. Okay, so with that, the rest of this will be shop update news and beyond crafting. If you are not here for any of that, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, let us get into the shop update. This shop update will be tonight, uh, Friday, November 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nope, Eastern Time? Well, I don't know what time we're in anymore. East Coast Time. And this is all the things that followed me home from the Knit New Haven birthday party. It is all on the Marie Cutie base and our Cecil Aaron Weight base. And we have a very large plethora of things going up. In short, we have the Till Death collection, the Holiday collection, and the Throne of Glass collection. So I will show those to you now. Sorry, I'm going to show you the Marie Cutie and then the Aaron Weight because not everything is on each base. So on Marie Cutie, we have Lady of Shalott, Earl Grey, Blood Moon, Christmas like it's 1882, Hearth, Ravishing, Cheer or Fear, Sandy Claws, Buzzard, Hello Princeling, Hello Witchling. I'm so close to that part of the book, I'm gonna die. Anyway, <laughs> Fireheart. And on Seasal Base, we will have Bone of My Bone, Death, Like My Cold Dead Heart, Blood Moon, Earl Grey, Lady of Shalott, Ravishing, Warm and Cozy, and Fireheart. Ooh, there should be a buzzard in there too. There's one or two buzzards going up as well. I just did not grab any. So that is the shop update. Next week will be tonals and I've already dyed them and I feel so ahead of the game. I'm a little concerned for my brain space. I don't know what's happening to me. That whole week of rest, just I'm productive. All right, so that is what's going up into the shop. Thank you so much to everybody who came to the birthday party and supported us at Knit New Haven and who can make it to the update tonight. I don't think there's words to express how much I appreciate the fact that you guys let me do this as my full-time job and it's supporting me enough to pay for a wedding. Mind blown all the time. So you can get everything at the shop, which is onceuponacorgi.com. And there is a newsletter you can sign up for. I send that out whenever I do updates, letting you know what's going to be in the shop, what events we are going to in the future, and anything else you might need to know. And that's it for all the crafting things. Everything else is beyond crafting if you're not here for what I am up to. Besides the crafting world, thank you so much for watching. And if you are, I've just been reading a lot. A lot. So I was on a staycation last week, as I've said a thousand times, and it was a lovely week of cleaning and organizing and reading and crafting. So I have read three Bibles. <laughs> this is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss. I don't know if anyone could pay me enough to stop talking about them. I have at least 10 TED Talks now. So welcome. I have read these three. This is my second time reading them and boy did I miss a ton in the first go round. And I am here for it. I cannot say enough about this series. It really shows how Sarah J Maas sort of grew as a writer, seeing as how she started this when she was very young. And in the middle when she started writing A Court of Thorns and Roses, you can really tell when she's sort of like got to her speed and everything became her intense style of writing of just sucking you in and dropping tiny easter eggs that blow up in your face later on and you didn't even realize it it's great so i'm now almost done with queen of shadows this is where i'm at i have to use a business card as my bookmark because these books are so teeny tiny and uh the character in this book is manan featured in croshan red ink which i love much like her cape. Let's see if I can find her name. I think she's in like chapter five. No, no, no. That would make too much sense. 
this is I love air I don't I don't know if there is a favorite I have yet um, I will let you know after I read these again but this is one of my favorites it just really captures the fine line that Selena has to take between like who she is and who she was and I just love the amount of sass in this book between her and Kale just so good so good so good so this is what I've been reading uh, I'm still waiting for the second discovery of witches book in the library I'm now number 10 in line I think I was 13 last week which is promising but that's fine because I still have three to four more I have four more books I have to read in this series before I'm finished with it so that's a buffer that'll give me about a week oh no this one oh that's because I accidentally dropped this one that's why it's got a little bent corner oops sorry bro that is what I've been reading um I did go through all of my fabric and organized everything and put it on tiny little bolts of fabric I do I did not have as much as I thought I did so my plan to de-stash stuff doesn't really work because everything has a plan I just have to do that plan except for the Disney princess fabric I'm considering over dyeing that I might just do a little test swatch and see what happens I think if I just over dye it with like a light gray it'll give me more of a palette that I will wear instead of a baby pink which I don't wear ever yeah so I got most of the stuff I wanted to get done over the vacation we did do the dessert testing for the wedding which was really good and at the same time awful the um Madeleine's which are tiny like shell shaped cookies they're french like cake cookies uh that was a disaster and a half i made about i made a batch and a half of just goop basically so we're gonna try that again the macarons went really well we now have two of the flavors set and the third one i think we're just gonna do just plain vanilla with um like a jam center which should be super easy and that's basically it yeah i watched a lot of the office i read a lot I started watching Criminal Minds. I forgot how good, the, like not good, but like I forgot how much I love cheesy TV true crime shows. So I've been watching a lot of Criminal Minds, reading, and uh, just preparing for next year. I'm trying to plot out everything. I think I have through July booked for shows, for work, and now I'm just kind of trying to plot out what I want to do for like yarn clubs or like special releases I kind of want to release all the advent colors throughout the year and I also want to do a couple new things with the shop so I'm trying to figure that out while also keeping my brain in my head from wedding planning because now we're at 112 days <laughs> it's coming up fast I've got my last dress fitting in December and then everything just has to come together everything has to come everything has Yes, I am doing Vlogmas this year, so I am super excited to do that again. I watched a bunch of Vlogmases over the vacation from last year, and it just got me super excited for Christmas time. So if I don't podcast next week, then at least we have Vlogmas starting like three days later. So with that, I am going to insert that piddly little vlog of my vlog vacation in here, and I will see you guys next week. And if not, I will see you in Vlogmas. Goodbye.
vacation. So today is November 11th. We have started vacation. So we're going to do a little vlogcation. Yes, but Iron Tear. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We have bread, we have showered, we have had breakfast. We're on our third cup of coffee. I mean, they're baby cups, so it's fine. Audrey's yelling at people. No one's outside. Nothing's here. And we are just updating <coughs> Iron. Updating the to-do list for the day before we head off on all of our errands. So we have to go to the post office, Total Wines to drop off all of our cans and bottles. Anything else? I have to find an H&M for the fabric recycling program they do. I have a bag, a garbage bag of scraps to send off to them. And then we have to drive up to Manchester to David's Bridal to drop off some stuff for the wedding dress. So let's get started. Yeah, bud? You just need some neck scratches? I forgot that it's a holiday, so the post office is closed. Ooh, trying to take my coat off in my car. Of course, my hair is doing crazy things now. Oh, there's paint on my hair. That's good. Vacation, day one. We have completed all of our errands, minus the post office, because it's a holiday, and I forgot. Happens a lot. So we are just going to settle in for the afternoon of setting up our planner. Decided to go with the digital one I got off Etsy. So we're putting in all the numbers because it's undated, which is not that bad. And have some coffee and watch The Office. You know, relax on day one. I was gonna do all my shopping for this week today, but I think I'm gonna spread it out. I think that's gonna be best. This is awful lighting everywhere. This is not much better. All right, it is day two of our vlogcation. Yesterday was super productive, so today we are going to be sewing, and I can't wait. It's dark, it's gloomy outside. We've got three projects in mind, and then maybe my veil, if I can get around to that. Jake is closing tonight, so that is the perfect time to do that, because that means I have until 2 a.m. to clean up, so. I think we're gonna start with cutting out all of our fabric and uh, get into it. I can't wait. So we have our green linen blend. Um, I'm not sure what the blend is, but I know it's not linen linen for um, a robe. And then our dark gray tartan for the robe blue and then I found a pattern for reusable coffee filters. So I have a butt ton of muslin that I use for pattern mock-ups and whatnot. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and make, um, I'm gonna make four of these. That way we have a good amount to recycle for. Because we are almost out of the disposable filters, so I would like to switch to these guys. And this should be super easy and fun. If I can find a link for this, I will leave it in the description. 
So once again, I have tried to make the robe blue and once again, I don't have enough fabric. <laughs> I'm never gonna make this dress. So that is three of the pieces. I still have one body piece. Uh, I think even if I unfold the fabric, I'm not gonna have enough. So. I'm just gonna move on to the robe and figure out what I'm gonna do with this fabric. I just love it so much and I really want it to be a shirt dress. Ah. Remember that time I said I was gonna vlog my vacation? It's now Saturday, so we are off vacation and on our regual, regular, regular um, weekend words. And uh, Jake has been home for the past three days, so I have not vlogged at all because we've just been hanging out and I still feel weird vlogging in front of him, even though he's very into Vlogmas. So it is Saturday morning, we went to the gym, I, got a like strain in my neck from reading yesterday oops i thought jake was closing so i just stayed in bed and read all day and we just sort of hung out and then he wasn't closing so i spent the whole day until like 3 p.m reading <laughs> not bad so it is saturday i've gone to the gym i have showered i've cut my bags and we are going to go to knit group i think to work on some ties because I need to get them done. And then today we are going to go through our fabric stash, record the pumpkin mail things, and hang up some artwork on this wall, which has been naked since we moved in. So let's do that. So we have gone through and organized the fabric stash. I think everything. So on this side, we have linens. Uh, basically this half is all SEA stuff. So we have our linens, which are super blown out. Um, our muslin, lots of white linen, a little bit of canvas, I think. Some knits, some brocades, some more linens. And then on this side is our everyday wardrobe. So this princess fabric which i think i'm gonna try over dyeing because it's like a baby pink and i don't wear pink but i might try and over dye it some stretch jean material to make jeans one day double gauze 
our plaid, which I don't know what it's going to be because I don't have enough for anything. Uh, this I think is from the SEA stuff. It's like uh, crinkly, stretchy, I don't know. This is a wool blend. Um, I have enough for an SEA dress. I don't know if I'm going to use it for that or for me. I think originally it was going for my German um, gown. These are all scraps or things that I have less than a yard of. And this is leftover fabric from Jake's Rope, which I think I'm going to make a dog bed cover out of for the pups. And here, oh, moving. This is a black floral brocade for SEA stuff. So these are just gonna pile on top. Now I can see all my fabrics. This is a blue velvet that I'm going to use for a recreation piece of three women receiving a love letter. I think I posted it on the podcast. I'll put a picture here. Uh, I want to recreate this painting. Two of my friends and I decided we were going to do that. So this is the fabric for it. And this is going to be, I don't know what, an SEA dress for sure. I was thinking about going like maybe, maybe later, but I think it's going to be like an Elizabethan gown. I thought about, what am I stepping on? No, that. Um, putting this towards my Slytherin gown. I might do that if I get like a nice gray or silver for an underdress. We'll see. And then this one will accidentally become my Ravenclaw dress. And the German black, and I have some yellow down here, some yellow and gold silks that uh, are going to be my Hufflepuff. Even though I know Ravenclaw is Celtic. I think they're all Celtic, except Gryffindor. He's definitely just like Renaissance England. But yep, there's my fabric stash and a this is all quilting cotton, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet because I don't really quilt. Or so project bags. So it's here. So now we can not close our fabric trunk. Uh, that's a bummer. So that's our sewing corner. Ooh, what happened to my bangs? Um, trying to slowly go through things. I kind of want to rearrange it. My desk is kind of like, I just, I want to get rid of these shelves because they're not that great. And I'm obviously not utilizing them because they're kind of see-through. So dog and cat hair get all over what's ever in the bottom. So, but I don't want to buy new furniture for this corner because this is a very small corner. I'm hoping to not have the small of a corner when we move. So that's the sewing. Ooh, that's bright. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're watching Great Bridge Bake Off Holiday Edition. So I'm gonna continue cleaning that. Oh, I did text Joanna. Oops. Maybe I'll do some sewing today. No, we're gonna hang up photos. We're gonna clean and hang up photos. Mm. All right, we did some shuffling. So now all of our big SEA dresses are in this cubby. Uh, this box is my veil, quilt and cayenne, patterns I need to put away, and this is, I don't even know what, um, my tiki top that I have to fix the zipper for, a skirt that I have to fix the buttons on, shorts that are falling apart at the seam that I haven't figured out what to do with. These are the lander, lander pants, lander shorts. Made them last May and I made them too small. For now, there is a gigundo rip on the butt. And not just like a rip, but like, they're falling apart. This is not, not good. So I might just take the buttons off and recycle the fabric. Oh, a shawl. Some uh, burpee bib things for presents. Um, for the next time somebody has a BB. A, what is this? Oh, it's a sock. Oh man. Yep, this is a sock that I need to rip off because I'm clearly not knitting it. 
and some t-shirts that I was going to do something with, but now I'm not sure what. So we have a vintage Star Wars. I think I was going to frame that. And then I have a Snape is Innocent tank top, t-shirt turned tank top. That I think I'm just going to take off the Snape is Innocent and also put that on a canvas. Because I have a canvas. Where is it? Oh, I can't look up my neck. This used to be a t-shirt that I got in Cordoba, Spain in high school and no longer fit, so I turned it into a happy little uh, canvas. And one single glove. I don't even know what's- oh, these are Jake's gloves, so this is knitting. That's knitting. Put in there. That in there. So that's things I need to fix bin. This is also things I need to fix. Pajama pants for Jake. Random pieces of fabric. Yeah, this is more patterns, pieces, um, a knitting project bag. Ooh, sweaters quantity of some Jameson Spindrift and fiber. My old corset. Yeah, this, I need to go through this. And then this bad boy. These are where I keep my patterns, but they're kind of a disaster. So, I need to go through those. And I think I'm going to put them in here because these aren't empty. More patterns. Random tools and Christmas fabrics. Pure junk ink, wires, steel boning, trim. Yeah, I need to go, I need to go through this. So much dry lavender, so much. Feathers, this needs to get through. Just kidding. Take two. Our gallery wall is in progress. So, a this frame, I don't know where I got this thing from, but it survived. It has fallen down four times already. This is a photograph my friend took in college of a cabbage. And I love it dearly. We also have this postcard that Becky from 
the Stringing It Together podcast and Becky Sorensen Designs sent me. It says, I'm not crazy. Let's go unicorn, I think, in German. And then this beauty is my Charlie Bow Water print. It's called The Fall. Um, and I think she did it before or right around the Court of Mist and Fury, so it's not technically the Sand and Feral, but this is what I imagine they would do if she was in not cobwebs and silk. Stardust, but a gown. Sorry, you can't see it. There, oh, that's not better. Oh, I love it so much. So my plan is I have four more prints coming in. I'm going to put two down here and two on this side. And I would like to get a Throne of Glass print to match my Charlie Bow Water. But I don't think that's gonna happen before we move. So I'm not going to arrange it around that. And if I do, I'll just go out or down or whatever. I'm so excited. So these walls have been pretty blank since we moved in. All we have is, I got these little prints when Jake and I started dating and we moved into our first apartment in 2013 that say moon my life and my sun and stars. Nope. You are my sunshine and to the moon and back. That's what they say. So those have been the only prints on the wall besides like my Hufflepuff thing and my little Cordoba t-shirt thing. So now we have some art on the walls. Jake has some paintings up and he had a little display case for some Lego figures, but they kept falling down. No matter where we go, I cannot get the 3M hooks to work. So I've picked up 3M Velcro strips. And this is the only thing that has worked, minus that cabbage. I just want, I just cannot wait to nail things into the wall. It's going to be so much easier when I can use nails.